Okay, perfect. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, this kind of came out, out of the blue. I've had a few different questions about septic um, and how that affects a real estate sale, um, whether you're representing the seller or the buyer. And, um, and admittedly, I, I found myself going to Craig because um, I didn't have all the answers because um, septics can be really complicated. And so anyways, I just yesterday talked to Craig and asked him, I was like, hey, can you, can you do a class on this? Because there's so, so much to unpack here. Um, so anyways, we're going to try and go through as much as we can um, regarding septics and how that affects a real estate sale today. But I'm sure there's going to be some things that come up. Um, depending on, you know, depending on what, whatever deal you're going through, things come up that, uh, that will change some of what he says. So anyways, always, always feel free to reach out if you have any, any questions, but Craig's going to kind of give a, an overview of how septics affect a sale and then talk, go a little di dive, a little deeper, um, into things that, you know, other agents may not think about. Um, like I said, I wasn't even thinking about them. So Craig, I'll let you take over and I will share the screen and just tell me, uh, tell me where to go. Okay. Well. I think on there you're going to look for selling my home under real estate. Um, anyway, if I said it could be complicated, I thought he said he was constipated. Uh, so anyway, okay. <laughs> we are talking shit with Tuttle today. And, uh, you know, you, you have this inspection addendum and you can inspect anything as a buyer, right? So... That's the place that you need to think about because your septic tank is something the seller typically will pump and pay a septic certified septic company to come out and make sure that it's been pumped and then turn in what's called a OSS on site system status to the county. And then the county comes out and they walk the land. To see if it needs to have maybe lids, risers, they call them, installed. And it's about all they really do, to my knowledge. Um, then they, they go back and they write a report up. and It's an RSS. And you get that for your closing. Now, that's typical for Pierce County. So Isaac was going to the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. So that's tpchd.org. And when you go there, I I often need to go there because it's not every sale that has a septic. In fact, it's few and far in between. And, uh, you know, it's a good refresher. But I always tell hey, people, look. I'm having trouble right. finding it. Can you, do you see what I, do you see my screen? So you got yeah, me, a septic system. Go you want to share your screen? No, you go ahead. Um, you go to Healthy Homes. Okay. And that's a septic system. Okay. It's my bad. And when you look at that, as you open that up, this is a great place to learn about septic systems if you don't know much about them. How to keep your septic system safe, so operation and maintenance of your system, understand your septic system, and so forth. Then it says selling your property on the third one down. And once you go there. Okay. Click on it, you're gonna see that. There you go. We recognize this. And then you need to make sure that you meet the requirements. So what we talked about was it's submitting that RSS application. And there you can see it down there that you can submit it online. And uh, the seller is responsible for doing that in Pierce County. But if they don't, it's not always that lender or the escrow will require that to be done prior to closing. Now, I can't remember, maybe 10 years ago or more, they didn't, nobody cared at all. They didn't, they didn't state that the real estate brokers were responsible for making sure that this was done, but then they, they made it our responsibility. And I can't even tell you that it's there's anything lawful about it. I don't think the left hand, communicates with the right it, it, you know completely but it, it's certainly more than it was in the past in the past if nobody brought it up you could just close on it well now if you close on it and you don't have the septic rss done then it's buyer's responsibility that's the six month mark to get it 
done in Smith of the County. Now, I don't think they sent out a police person to check this all out, but that is the way it is. So the reason I bring that up is that let's say you had an investor that wanted to buy a property as is. Well, they could buy it as is, not do an inspection on the system, septic system, and then they escrow has told me, I've talked to WFG in Chicago on occasions like this, and they said, we just need something in writing that the buyer knows that they're responsible for it and they're holding the seller harmless from having the RSS done. So I talked to the county and they, they said, yeah, we don't really have a checks and balance for it, but we, that is true. It needs, it is required to be done. So as far as the septic system goes and, and doing the inspection, um, we put in the offer that there's this addenda to have the septic system pumped. Well, in Pierce County, I'm going to keep referring to that. I don't know the other counties as well, but I just did one down in Lewis County. Um, it You really need timing-wise to get it ordered up because the county could take up to two weeks to come out and complete their RSS, and that's after the septic's even pumped. So I have the form up on my uh, screen, Craig, if you can see it, but um, just to clarify, it does have the timelines here that, that specifies that the seller needs to do it within 10 days if left blank, and then the buyer has three days after that. They have to provide proof they have three days to do so. And then the buyer has, I'm sorry, the buyer has three days right. to review it. And the problem is a lot of people don't educate their sellers and say, hey, you should probably have this thing pumped prior to going on the market or right when you go on the market because getting contractors, as you know nowadays, everybody's a little busy. Separate companies, more like inspectors, where, where yeah, they know they got times of the essence they got to get there. But still, they've got to get there, pump it, and then fill out the paperwork. The septic contractor can fill out the paperwork for you and turn in the RSS to the county. They'll typically charge fifty to a hundred dollars more to do so, or the seller can do it at tpchd.org. Um, in any event, you still have fourteen days for the county to get out there. So that process does kind of contradict our form, the way the form works. Because if a seller hasn't made the order to get it done. It's hard to meet the timelines in that form. But the biggest thing is getting it done prior to closing. So what, what typically happens when, when buyers make offers, then there's septic uh, systems. I mean, we can talk about from the sellers and we just did that, but it's really more scary as the buyer when much like sewer, you can't see it when you walk through the home. So you have no idea what's there. Well, you think in your mind that everything's fine, that, I've got a septic addendum that's going to cover me. Well, if you read through the septic addendum, it doesn't state that the buyer or the, the seller has to do anything with the drain field. They just have to have the septic system inspected by a, you know, inspected in the sense that you get an OSS and then you get an RSS, just like we talked about, and go through the process. So I've been on enough leaves to see that scared me. That they go out, they just open the lid, pump it, they look at the baffle, which is a hole at the top of the tank that goes horizontally, right? So once the water rises up high enough, it goes out through this hole. And like a dryer vent, it has a baffle where it has a flapper that opens up and one way out, but nothing back in. So this water goes out the top of it. And they look at that, and if it's in good shape, that's it. They pumped it. They looked at the baffle. There's not usually much else they look at. They say that they're looking at to make sure the tank's in good condition. Well, it's pretty dark, and you can't see it. So they're looking for water in the tank along with the sludge at the bottom that drops to the bottom, and they know that it's holding. If they get to a tank that's dry, well, then the sludge went to the bottom, but the gray water, they call it, the water portion from the shower and the sink, dishwasher, everything's not as solid. If that leaks out 
Now we got a crack in the tank. But they're not taking a scope to and a flashlight to look at this tank to see if it's cracked. That's not the case. So your buyer is, in my opinion, I, I was worried about it. So I always ask, investigate these questions, but I can't even tell you today that I'm 100% confident in the way that it works for my buyer because they're doing what the county requires them to do to get the RSS to meet their, their county requirements. The reality is there's no flashlight, there's no video, and you're just looking at a septic tank. That's everything coming out of the house like a side sewer. There's a pipe, comes into it, drops in solids and gray water until that level of fluid and solids rise, that it goes out the baffle and into the drain field. And that's where the great unknown is. It exits a tank into another pipe that leads to other pipes that depending on how the design is, it's going to leach out onto the property and drain in the property through drain tube piping. And that could be a long series of 100 feet or more or less that zigzag through an area of the property. Maybe it goes down in one pipe and it changes out into a pitchfork or three veins that go out. Whatever the case is, it's got to go out those and into that perforations on the bottom of the pipe and leach, they call it, into the property that is perkable, they call it. So it perks, meaning that land is sandy loam, gravel, enough to perk and drop if it's clay or if it's say a really high water table that's not perkable right so ahead of time before they build they would design the system and find out where to locate the drain field based on the soil and they'd have to take a sample at the right time of the year, not the rainy time of the year. The county has requirements. And it makes sure it's perk. It perks, perkable. So what about you and your buyer? You're doing this inspection, and it's like, well, we're we don't have an inspection besides sewer, in essence, our drain field. No. Uh you need to write into the offer if you're concerned, uh, that the sellers to not only pump the septic, but have the drain field scoped by a licensed and bonded septic company and then make any necessary repairs if the pipe is somehow damaged or not serviceable, meaning it's not draining properly. Well, nobody's doing that because sellers would freak out when you're making an offer. So where do you do that? On your inspection if you're uncomfortable. I recently did one, went out, and everything was turned Turned on, as, as most inspectors do, they turn on all the faucets and all the washing machine, dishwasher, da 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 da. They go to the house to see if any plumbing's leaking there. Well, what if this is draining slow in certain areas? Well, sure enough, this one was draining slow. When we flushed it, it 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 didn't really drain quite right either. So that was a concern that something was going on with a septic. Now that's the first time ever because it's like, well, if the septic tank if the drain field had a problem, but the septic tank had room in it, you wouldn't know if you have a problem with the drain field because the septic tank would just hold it. Well, in this case, the septic tank was full. They knew they had to get it pumped. We went out towards the cap, the clean out, and noticed there was, you know, solids. It's like, well, that's strange. I've never seen that before. And so that's why we wrote into the building inspection response what I said earlier. Seller's got a higher license bonded contractor, pump septic, making necessary repairs to it. And just like the addenda says, as well as scope the drain field. Craig, so can I they, something there? I, I would just want to yeah. make sure I understand what you're saying. 
so you didn't put it in your initial offer. You did the inspection. And during the inspection, you found that that uh, drains were running slow. And so in your inspection response, you basically said, hey, we need we need proof that the lines are clear on top right. of the septic room. Okay, that's I missed that part yesterday when you were explaining this to me. That's that makes and sense. Then, yeah, and then of course it's a it's a buyer or seller's market and the seller counters back no. Um <laughs> we know that that's not a problem with that. The problem is is our what do you call them a ball valve check valve, the float. So like in a toilet when when the water in the tank fills up it stops filling water in the tank because the float feels the pressure from the water rising at a certain level and says, we're good. So the float in the septic tank that monitors the sludge in the gray water didn't, it was malfunctioning, inoperable, whatever the case. So it just kept coming up. So that's why I came up past clean out, which was really strange. And by the way, it was built in 2000 and six i think so bottom line is it had a septic tank alert alarm and the light was on so on a really old house you may not have that so it wouldn't tell you but it was like no duh that light's on because i see like corn and other junk hanging outside this uh, clean out so what what went through my mind and the buyer is well, how, what, what if it's not the float? What, what if it's the drain field? And how much would that cost to dig up all of that pipe? I mean, I guess you could leave it in the ground, but if you're going to run new pipe, you don't want to run into the other pipe. So how does it cost to dig it up and take it out? You know, I don't know how far down it is. You can read on this site. It's not always terribly far down. So, you got to worry about like, but if they have horses, cows out in the pasture where a drain field was, that's not good. I did have one of those in Eatonville one time and, and they knew that they had damaged their drain field. So they got it repaired. Well, it was news to me. I think about it. Yeah. The horse's hoof went right through it. Right. It was soppy, moist ground and it goes down and it punctures this kind of flexible plastic pipe at the time. Uh, it was made with a little bit more flexible pipe. Bottom line is a horse hoof could damage it. What, what else can damage it? Well, heavy trucks driving in and de delivering a load of tile roofing. I remember having to worry about that when we were in the construction days. And if we had a heavy load coming in, you just didn't want big trucks driving over the drain field. And also, it'll say on you know this site, you can't install large... Obviously, you can't put a swimming pool. It's too deep. But you can't put a large patio or basketball court over the top of your septic system, right? You wouldn't be able to service it if you had to. Um, so you have this unknown underground thing that drains and perks out this gray water. How do we know that it's in good working order? Well, kind of like a side sewer scope. You could scope it, yes, but it's not common. So I'm not saying here that there's like surety. I say to people, look, go to the website, ask a septic con contractor, ask the health department, learn about septic systems. It's very uncommon for sellers or buyers to address drain fields at the time of their inspection. Doesn't mean they shouldn't. It's just not common. Our forms don't allow a place for it. I think the reason is that you go back to the description of how this drain field goes out. It's not a one line running into the main sewer line. It's a line leaving the tank and it may go 10 feet, 20 feet before it hits this drain field, which then is a design of pipes that zigzag go out into one and branch into three or four others, pitchfork style. How are you going to get a scope to turn on 90 degree bends? It's not going to be easy. You know those sewer scopes that you've been on 
they catch up on roots. They catch up on shifts in the pipe and cavities or just clogs that are just too much for them to get past. And they have these temperamental little cameras and they're very expensive and they're not, not willing to really cram them in there and, and get past things. So when it comes to a drain field, you've got obstacles in just a clean, good condition drain field in getting that thing to navigate in certain cases. So there's not this 100% answer I'm telling you here today that you can be sure for your buyer that they can go out and scope this. There's some deeper understanding here, no pun intended. And you need to pass that on, just like we say to people in the title business. I don't know, that's, that's pretty heavy. CC&Rs, HOAs, resale certificates from condos, hundreds of pages, daunting, no fun. Don't act like you know it all. Say, you know what, not a title expert. Let me get you the phone number of the title company and you can talk to their expert. And the same thing here, go to your local health department, look up what their site says, Mason County, Lewis County, Kitsap County, Pierce County, learn about it. What I can tell you is you're gonna disperse things down a drain, whether it's a toilet or a shower, a dishwasher, it's gonna go out and it's piping under your house. That's called, you know, your waistline coming out. It's going to go out into the septic tank. And from there, I can kind of help you about it with this addenda that I have in front of me. After it leaves, leaves the septic tank, I, I can't help you a ton. But this is what I know. And you have the right to inspect it. And you should call some experts. And every system is going to be a little bit different. And it is possible to scope it. But as you heard me say earlier, even a good new system will be a challenge for some some cameras i'm sure they get by a brand new system but you know when you're taking 90 degree turns that's that's not uh, like a typical sewer scope so be careful not to be a know-it-all but try to learn some of this and at the same time it's like a unicycle we ride the 10 speed every day we go 22a 22d 22k 22t and a 30 five here's your offer well how often are you putting 22ww or 22s or some other counties in Denver? not that often that's that unicycle so don't be afraid of it understand it to the best of your ability and then edify the experts and pass on to the buyer that they should contact the experts to help you with this shit so craig can i um can I kind of pivot what so you just you gave a big overview and um, now I kind of want to put it into action as if we're um, talking to a buyer who is um, who wants to write an offer on a home that has a septic. So um, the notes I have is is number one we we didn't really talk about this we kind of glossed over this but this is the most important thing. Number one is to send. Um, I, I don't. I'm, I was trying to find it, but I'll, I'll send it in our um, meeting recap. Uh, but to send the the septic disclosure um, form, and so there's a form. Um, maybe, maybe it's provided by the Northwest MLS. I yeah. Is that it? Okay. There, there's there's one. Uh, go ahead. But there there's very good information here on the Tacoma Pierce County Health uh, Health Department's website um, about septic systems. If that's what you're asking or saying, but. Yeah, there's actually a disclosure document that you can send them or give it to them in person when you go to show someone a home. Now, you don't have to do this every time you show someone uh, the same buyer a home with a septic system. If you, Once you give it to them, you give it to them and, and they're good. But the point is you should be disclosing first and foremost. Um, something that I'm going to do from here is I'm going to... Um, this is a system that I put in place when I find that there's something that I um, will often need to send a, a client. I make a template email and then I save it in a folder in my email um, where I have a bunch of templates for when this situation comes up. So what I'm going to do personally is I'm going to have a, um, a an email that says, hey, this is a septic disclosure and it's going to have a link to this. Um, I just pointed at my screen. Sorry, a link to this and um, that people can go to. And it's also going to have the attachment of the PDF. And then people, then whenever you show a client for the first time a home with a septic, you send this to them and you say, hey, just want to let you know, here's some things to be aware of when it comes to a septic, um, writing an offer on a septic and buying a home with a septic. Um, secondly, 
unless you're working with an investor who um, you know is flipping a home, really has capital to um, to handle a septic problem, and they're saying, "Hey, we're fine not including that addendum." So we're talking 95% of the time always include the septic addendum. Um, that's really important because the septic addendum, while it doesn't cover everything as we've discussed today, it does cover getting the septic pumped um, so that that's not on the buyer and um, having the septic company at least um, file the RSS, which states that the septic, uh, the septic tank seems to be in good condition. So almost always you're going to want to include this. Um, before I continue, Craig, can you explain the importance of why, why there are septic addendums for King County, Thurston County, Kitsap County, and Pierce County, um, and not I, it, why, why they have specific septic addendums for those and how they kind of vary from the 22S, which is just a generic septic addendum? Uh, the only thing I can say is that we, it, it, Pierce County, I'd have to go look at those addendums. I'd like to see if there's a difference. I'm gonna guess that it's the, you know, nomenclature here, if you will, that OSS, RSS, right? But we know that's OSS, RSS in Pierce County. We'll pull up a, a, a different one, and it may not have those types of uh, abbreviations, but um, each county will have different requirements for how, how you do it on going to sell a home. So for instance, down in Lewis County recently, I had asked the broker, I said, well, you know, we, you're telling us that you're not going to pump the septic system until after the appraisal, like not just after the inspection from the buyer, but after the appraisal. And so that's awful late in the game because in the county I work with, and you can see it right here on this site, it says, you know, get it, get it ordered because they asked for at least 10, 10 business days to issue the RSS. Well, he was saying, no, our county doesn't require that. As soon as that septic company comes out there and they're done, that's it. Escrow's not checking with it, and you know the county's not following up. Is just buyer and seller responsibility. The right. lender, of course, asked for it. But so what he did is he did it. He pumped it, and I took my phone out and did a jot not pro scan, emailed it off to everybody, and we were done. And they, they did it one week prior to closing. So I, I just think that you know each county has just different requirements. And so that's why there are some different forms. And so we know Pierce County has one. Um, Thurston County has one. I think it's kind of integrated with a well, or it used to be. And then you get out in the other counties, and there's no specific um, addenda. So you use the generic uh, septic addenda. Which is the one I have on my screen right now. So in general, if there's a specific addendum for the specific county, i.e. there's King County, there's Thurston County, there's Kitsap, and then there's Pierce, and use those. If there isn't an addendum for the county that you are writing the property, a uh, uh, purchase sale for, then just use the generic one. But the moral of the story is use the specific one um, if possible, and uh, almost always use the addendum. And the lender will, you said at the beginning, Craig, the lender doesn't require it. As far as I know, convention, I mean, Conventional FHA, VA, they all require it and they need the RSS in order to close. Um, do you know something contrary to that? Uh, no, I guess, you know, we just always do it nowadays when there is a septic. And so I've never had an issue where it's not being done and the lender's asking for it. But being in the business 20 years, I could tell you prior to 2010, it was far different. You know, it just the left wasn't speaking to the right. Everybody did the job. You closed. It was up to the buyer and the seller, or in, in the case, really, of the buyer, that the seller wasn't going to do that to get you know the septic inspected to their own satisfaction, require pumping, etc. So, so I guess you could say the moral of the story is um, even if the lender does require it, which I believe they do, um, lenders aren't perfect, um, and they may. Oh, they may not ask for it. Um, so you are, um, your, you know, your job is to represent your, your buyer. And so make sure when you are, uh, when you get mutual acceptance, what we do here for Craig's transactions and my transactions, and what I encourage people to do is I have a spreadsheet that shows, hey, here's mutual acceptance. Here's when earnest money is due. Here's when the 35R is due. Here's when the septic uh, documents are supposed to be delivered to my buyer. Or if you're on the seller side, when I have to deliver it to the seller, to the, to the buyer from the seller. 
So keep those dates, put them on your calendar, or at least put them on a spreadsheet. And then you follow up with it because nobody else is going to be watching out for your buyer. That's your job. And so make sure you're not taking, you're not just throwing in this addendum because, oh, well, Isaac says I have to throw it in. Make sure you're throwing in the addendum and you're reading the addendum and you know the importance of it and you're following up with it. But then lastly, Craig, I wanted to talk about, so when do you, after all we've talked about, I had never, and I'm totally confessing this, I've never asked um, for a seller to um, inspect the drain pipes or even from the home to the septic system. Um, I'm going to consider it more. So what do you do? Because in, in a hot market like this, um, you can't, you don't always have the luxury of asking for something like that. So do you always advise your client to either ask the seller to do it or to at least have the client do it themselves? Or how, how do you go about that with your clients? It's very difficult. I mean, over, over the years, I've only ran into three, I think, that now with this one down in Mason County uh, that were, you know, potential problems. And they really kind of, it, it, in all cases, they took, stood out. And one was, it was visible, as we just mentioned on that clean out and, and the septic alert alarm. And then the other one, the person told me that their horses had, you know, hoofed through it. And when they pointed out to the pasture where the drain field was located and I could see how soft the ground was, I was like, oh, yeah, that made sense. And then the other one was on a commercial application where we were baffled, no pun intended, baffled. The, the big tank in the back of this lot off of Canyon in 128, they open it up and they go, well, we think it's cracked. And we're like, well, how do you know if it's cracked? We're on the seller's side. And he goes, well, um, well, there's no, it's not holding water. Well, what'd you do, run a hose? No. Well, we've had quite a bit of rain lately. Wouldn't it come in, seep in? And I guess that wasn't the case. It depends on the height of the tank and the groundwater table. Bottom line is he's saying that the gray water should have held in the tank. And there wasn't. It, it was just very, very low, just towards the bottom. And so sure enough, they, I don't know why, the septic companies have to be in Pierce County. If you go back to that website, there's a list of certified service companies. You've got to be on that. you got to be on that list. There's a little black dot by each of them as to what they're capable, of, whatever. Well, this company says, they get out down there in their hazmat suits, they climb inside this tank and... They say, yeah, it's cracked here, da da da. So anyway, bottom line, ended up seller ended up repairing it. It was concrete, so they had to repair it, patch it. And that was a, that you know just three times in my career. Um, but I got to tell you, if it's a small crack or what if the crack's like up way high, right? And it's holding water and gray water. Come on now, you can't tell me that you just look in a tank and and you can say, oh, it's not cracked, it's holding holding water. And they don't run a hose in there, so you don't know. But that crack, crack's up higher. In this case, cr the crack was down lower. There's just no perfect science to it. And I'll tell you, you've got to have your head on straight when you're going out and trying to help somebody. Again, you're not, not the expert, but hey, shit runs downhill, right? Gravity systems. Gravity systems, most of them are. That means from my house, for instance, here, it goes out to the street, which is eight foot below just the pavement and then to get under the pavement to hit the sewer main it might be down at 10 or 12 right so it's got gravity from the house it doesn't need pressure to push it as long as that pipe is clean straight you're good as soon as roots get in the way or a hoof from a horse or whatever things change well how do you speculate these when you're out looking at a septic thing kind of similar to the side sewer you go oh well that's where the sewer is in the street because i can see a manhole lid so this pipe must come out of the house somewhere directly in line, by the way, with what? Your bedroom? No. Your kitchen? Great possibility. The bathroom where the shitter is? Better possibility. Line up where your plumbing's coming out. Look where it should go to, in the case of a sewer, towards the street. And you don't have to be an expert. Don't tell the buyer you know, but you could look up on you know, different GIS systems. Bottom line, you could pretty much figure out where these are then guess what? Bingo. You find little white caps outside the house, whether it's for sewer or septic, for this, what's called a clean-out, right? And 
then you can go bingo that puppy comes out of the house right here and i can open this up and i can take a video scope down or i can service it because it's serviceable it's not in bad repair i can stick a snake down there with a you know a grinder i can get that cleaned out there by the way that goes out probably directly from here out to there in the middle of the street well, what about a drain field it, it goes out somewhere not in the street it goes on your property so you still have an idea where all your plumbing fixtures in the house are coming out. And if you crawled into the crawl space, you'd see the black PVS service, you know, the, the four inch line going out to where the clean out is and just follow it out. Then what happens? You look in the lawn and it's green in one area, very green. The rest of the area is not as green. You could tell where a drain field is. It's leaching into the soil, not very far beneath. And that is going to have longer weeds and grass than the rest of it. So just a little common sense, right? Now that you have your kind of boundaries set up as to where things are, you need to look around and go, hmm, is there any horses? Oh, is there any major trees or shrubs that have roots that can grow into this? Uh, is there a driveway that goes over this? They have large excavating equipment in a contractor yard around here. Uh, whatever the case is, just put on your thinking cap, right? Oh, then the other one, you walk the land. And... Not always is it fortunate that it rained the week before, but what if it did? And it's a little soupy. Well, you could, you could get an idea as to whether or not that's very perkable. Well, when you say, well, why should I be worried about that? Someone had it permitted when they bought it and installed it. Well, guess what? Developments start going in 20 to 25, 30, 40, 50 years later. Your drainage systems aren't always the best engineered and architected over the years different type of requirements are enforced by the counties and you could end up having a property that was around a lot of development where the drainage systems weren't good enough to get into different storm retention ponds on site or out of the storm uh county storm drain and your land has now changed and what would have been an underground septic system and drain field became a mound above ground where you build a mound of dirt and you pump it up and you let it leach and drain out above the surface because your water table is high. All right. I shouldn't go on and on. I've said a lot, but the bottom line is it's really just common sense. So you have to detect what you think could be a problem and bring it to the buyer's attention and have them check with an expert. But again, it's underground and you can't see it. So, it's tough. You could get yourself, well, not you, as long as you say, hey, go look at the website, talk to an expert. I'm not an expert. Now you're safe. Like Isaac said, set out the disclosures, etc. Because otherwise, not you, but the buyer gets themselves in a situation that they would have been kicking themselves for not thinking about it or checking into it. Right. And that's why number one is, you know, CYA, send the disclosure. And it only has to be sent once, but when you're showing a home with a septic, send the disclosure, send the website, tell them, hey, here's the risks of buying a home with a septic. Number two, as we already discussed, is include the septic addendum and follow up on the timelines. Make sure the seller actually does it and you're following up if they don't have it to you in time. And then number three, this isn't necessarily an order in how the transaction goes, or importance. But number three is advise your client that, um, you know, hey, we're in a competitive market. We're not going to be able to get the seller to um, inspect the lines, but I'm advising you that it may be a good idea for you to do that. Um, if they don't do that, then that's where the common sense comes in. That's where, you know, as the inspection's happening, you're kind of looking around. Like Craig said, you're uh, talking to the inspector, the home inspector and saying, how are, how are the uh, lines, how are the sinks and the toilets um, flushing and draining? Um, well, they seem to be good. Okay, that's good. You're walking around where you notice that uh, the grass is really, is much taller and much greener. And you're like Craig said, feeling around seeing if it's like majorly mushy over there because it shouldn't be. It should be underground enough that it, it doesn't, you, you don't really notice it unless you're looking for it. Um, so you're just kind of using the common sense there. And that's where, um, you know, this, this can, a lot of people might hear this and be like, oh my gosh, there's so much information here. I don't know if I feel confident. Well, here's the cool thing. This is how you separate yourself from other, from other agents. This is one thing that, you know, you, you do that most agents don't do. And this is also how you make clients for life. Um, one thing that I've always really respected about Craig and his businesses, he, 
like anyone who starts in the business, he started out, you know, hustling. And now Craig's gotten to the point where, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't market so much to, um, to new buyers and new sellers, his business comes from majority from past clients. And when you talk to Craig's past clients, they are so loyal because Craig's the agent who is in their crawl space. And he's the agent who's pointing out, Hey, do you see that part of the lawn over there and how it's like really caving in and super mushy? I think there's something wrong with the, uh, with the drain fields. And so that's the type of thing that um, instead of getting stressed out about this conversation, you guys should get excited by this because this is how you really can blow, blow clients away and make them super, um, super appreciative to you. Because I mean, my gosh, if you were to point something like that out and save your client, I mean, you can save a client thousands and thousands of dollars and they'll, they'll remember that. So anyways, that was kind of, kind of a, a ramble there, but um, that's kind I of- think Yeah. Can I add a little something? Um, Please do. So every county on their health department website has a lot of comprehensive information and it might really be worth your while to go look through that stuff and make sure that you are understanding what a septic system looks like, what a county requires, so that you know your stuff when you go to talk about this. You don't have to be an expert in everything, but like Isaac and Craig were saying, something small like this can really set you apart. So, you know, if you have downtime and you don't have a ton of clients, spend your time learning about septic. Yeah, right. totally. Yeah, I, 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 while we're talking, I'm sure other people have too. Chime in if you have, but you know, you just Google, what is a septic drain field system? It takes you right to the EPA. You know, United States Environmental Protection Agency. Boom. And what Sarah just said is, there it is. You do a little bit of research and you type that in. What is a drain field system? And it says, gives you some options. And it says, what is a drain field septic system? And then it takes you, and I, I just breathed through it while you guys were talking. Pretty much everything we just talked about. But the nice thing is, you leave this conversation, it's nice to have that. You could use it like Isaac said for, your, you know, you got disclosures. This is your toolbox. And you just send somebody a link so you don't have to repeat it. And it just breaks down the you know, simple components of most septics with drain fields. I just opened it up because Craig texted it to me. Uh, here it is on my screen. So we'll send this link as well. But yeah. Sarah, basic. What was that? It's just basic. You know, that's just one example, right? Other examples are, have you ever <clears> been <throat> talked to about asbestos and how scary it is? Well, yeah. But then go Google it. And then watch the YouTubes and break it down. And you'll start to understand there's two different types of asbestos. The one's harmful, the one's not. You'll understand what was made, vermiculite, and what it's called. Why is it vermiculite? Da, da, da. And pretty soon it's not that scary, although it's very important to understand it because you don't want to stir it up and make a fry balloon in the air. That's what it becomes bad. But you definitely don't want to buy a house that has an insulation or inciting if somebody's uncomfortable. But you definitely want to just, like Sarah was saying, just, just Google something and Educate yourself. Pass yep. the information along. Well, this is such a common common thing in real estate. I mean, we all know it's not hard to get your license, right? <laughs> I mean, it's a 90-hour course, and it's pretty pretty simple. And the test is not that difficult. Maybe it took you two times, but it's, it's pretty simple. So there's a lot of people who we're competing against who aren't that impressive. And, that, and um, that's not, not to be offensive. I'm just saying we're, we've got a lot of easy competition. It's not hard to separate yourself as a real estate broker and just educating yourself is a huge way of doing it. And in my opinion, that's like, you can, you can be successful and get, you know, get clients once by just going through the motions and just getting them through a deal. But the way you get clients for life and you get clients to become referrers is by blowing them away with your knowledge. And if you don't know something, don't, don't BS. Tell them, I don't know. Let me look into this. Let me educate myself. Let me talk to my designated broker. Let me talk to Craig, the owner, and let me get back to you with information on this. That's fine. Humility is great in this. I mean, everyone appreciates when people are humble and don't, and don't just, you know, BS their way through something. But the moral of the story is educate yourself. And that is, I mean, I'm telling you, you will see your clients just appreciate it so much because they'll feel comforted by the fact that you, um, you have you have answered their questions even if you know we can't answer how, how are the drain fields looking i can't answer that it's under the ground i obviously nobody knows that but i can tell you here are the risks and here are your options to um mitigate those risks 
Um, and just giving them that information as opposed to just saying, oh, well, all they can do is in inspect the, the septic tank. That's all we can do. You're going to comfort your clients and they're going to remember that. Um, and that's, you know, I get clients for life. So that, that would be kind of the moral of the story here. <laughs> yeah, I hate back to another thing I want to, that I use a lot is you want to go to the, that website where we were on at Pierce County and you should be able to go to other websites and you should be able to find your records and drawings online and they're called as built. Yes. So, you know, under that page under resources, the second dot says find your re record drawing online and you'll go in there and some of us have done this and you see this old chicken scratch, just literally horrible drawing that you can hardly read or you can find a much cleaner one. The bottom line is they are archived at Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. And so at least what you can do with that is, is they show you where the road is, where the house is, where the drain field is. So if it's not that obvious, that's a pretty nice little resource. And you can do that ahead of time. And like Isaac said, just being the hero again, hey, here's something I found, you know, uh, take a look at it. Yeah, that's a that's a good. We've been talking about the buyers uh, buyer side so much here. Let's just really quickly conclude this meeting by talking about um, how how you can blow away your seller really quick. So if you healthy homes, gosh, I haven't listed a home with a septic since earlier this year. Um, Craig, can you remind me? I'm, I would find it, but I want to kind of be fast here. Where oh, oh, you're you're in the same spot. You got the open house sign selling your property, and then just scroll down. And it says, let's get started and need more information. And then, oh, there we and go. resource and resources. Second one down says, find your record drawing online. Yep, here it is. So all you would do is you would put your client's address in here and then see what they have um, already recorded at the county. Now, if you're competing for a listing and you've got two other listing agents who went in there and they just said, oh yeah, I'm going to do such a great job marketing your home and I'm going to do open houses and everything. But you come in there and you talk about the septic system and Mr. Seller, by the way, when, when we go to sell your home, you're going to need your septic system pumped. Oh, and here's all the information I found on your septic system. Here's the as built, here's where it's located. And here's the last time it was pumped. Guess what? You're going to separate yourself from all those guys who came before you and talked about their marketing. You know what I mean? And so anyways, that's, that's just kind of, um, we've been talking about kind of how this affects you representing a buyer, but um, this is also another way you can separate yourself as a seller, um, as a listing broker is, um, is you know, is showcasing your knowledge on septic systems and coming prepared to a listing appointment um, with, with the septic report, everything that is already available online. So anyways, if you have questions about this, let me know. Um, I'm happy to, um, I can, I'm happy to kind of show you if, if you have a listing coming up or anything like that, let me know. I can show you guys how to navigate this website, but we'll include all this um, in the recap email. So you guys have this as well. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Awesome. Wait, really quick. Does anybody have any questions about any of this? Any, um, anything, anybody want to add any experiences, anything? Okay, I guess that's it. <laughs> Thank cool. you, guys. No problem. Thank you, everyone, for coming. You'll get a recap email shortly. Awesome. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Craig. Bye. All right. Bye.